Another practical example of how we use power is when we needed to pump water out of a well onto the ground. And to make things a little simpler, we're going to assume that the speed at which the water comes out of the pump is going to be relatively small, so we can ignore it. So the, most of the power is used to get the water from the well, that's 18 meters below, the water level is 18 meters below the ground level. So how much power is required to pump uh, water out of, the, uh, out of the well? And then in this particular example, let's say that the pump has a horsepower, uh, or has 2.5 horsepower, how many gallons per minute could the pump pump out of the well? And that's ultimately then the question, the amount of volume per unit time is equal to what? Okay, that's what we're looking for. Of course, keep in mind that a gallon is 3.79 liters and the mass of one liter, so the mass of one liter of water is equal to one kilogram. So that can kind of help us. So the mass of one gallon, the mass of one gallon is equal to 3.79 kilograms because ultimately, for us to be able to calculate how much power is required or how much water we can lift out of there, it has to do with power, it has to do with weight, and so we're more concerned about the mass and the weight of the water than with the volume of the water that will simply come out of the equation. All right, so again, the definition of power is equal to work over time or the change in energy over time. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use the change in energy over time because we're li literally giving it more potential energy, ignoring the kinetic energy that we give it by spewing it out. Let's say it just kind of dribbles out slowly. So this is the change in the mgh over time. And of course, m and g are constant, so this is equal to mg times delta h over delta time. And so at what rate can we lift the water out there? Um, hmm, actually, you know what? I think what I'm going to do here instead, instead of doing it like that, I'm going to assume that M is the unknown, so I'm going to pull the G and the H out and say the delta mass over time is the thing that we're looking for. How much mass of water can we lift 18 meters against the force of gravity in a certain amount of time? All right, that makes more sense. Uh, the power is given. G is known, H is known, the delta M delta T, that is what we're looking for. So there will be the question mark. Once we know what this is, we'll convert that to delta V delta T using that relationship right there. All right, so that means we're going to write, uh, we're going to say power is equal to GH times delta M over delta T and dividing both sides by GH and solve for delta M delta T, we can write delta M delta T is equal to power divided by g times h. Notice, the higher you have to lift the water, the less mass you can get out of, the less water you can get out of the well. All right, we have 2.5 horsepower, and of course we want to convert that to watts, uh, so that would be 746 watts per one horsepower. And divide the whole thing by g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And finally h, which is 18 meters. And that will give us the amount of mass of water in kilograms that we can lift out of that well with a pump of 2.5 horsepower. So 2.5 times 746 divided by 9.8 and divided by 18 equals, looks like 10.6 kilograms. 10.6 kilograms per second. Because the units will be mass over time or kilograms per second. So 10.6 kilograms per second means, since one kilogram is one liter of water, that means that the delta V delta T, because it's a one-to-one -one correspondence, is therefore equal to 10.6 liters per second. And of course, if we then divide that by 3.79, we can then calculate the number of gallons. And so we have two point, let's say about 2.79 gallons per minute. Okay, so two and a half horsepower pump, which you can buy in most hardware stores, can pull about 2.8 gallons of water out of a well 18 meters deep, that's quite deep by the way, uh, per minute. Oh, 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 that was per second, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I made a mistake. Yes, I had it per second, and that was per second, and I am not done yet because now, since we know there's 60 seconds in a minute, so we want minutes here, 
and seconds there. And um, 60 seconds is one minute. Hang on a second. Yeah. So that was per second. I was going to say that's not very much for a pump like that. But if we take that and multiply it times 60, it's 167 gallons, 167 gallons per minute. And now that seems a whole lot better. Yeah, that was a little suspicious. 2.79 gallons per, uh, uh, per minute would not, of course, not be very good. But, and so that's how you would do that. Use the very same principle, starting with the definition of power equals work over time or the change in energy over time. And in this case, since the height was a constant, we pulled that out and we just had it in terms of delta m delta t, which is what we're looking for. And that's how you do that problem.